Matthew 28, beginning with verse 11. And it reads as follows from the New Living Translation of the Bible. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priest mm -hmm. what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. <laughs> they told the soldiers, you must say Jesus' disciples came during the night mm -hmm. while, he, while we were sleeping and stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. The story spread widely among the Jews and they still tell it today. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. <clears throat> my brothers and my sisters, mm -hmm. this week as I observed this text, I couldn't help but hearing the words of Deacon Raymond Smith. <laughs> As I read about the bribe and the false narrative that was told, if I could simply take Deacon Smith from his pew and place him with the religious leaders, I think he would say, don't fall for the okie doke. <laughs> so I want to encourage you from the subject, my brothers and my sisters. Don't fall for the okie doke. Deception is defined as the act of misleading or causing someone to believe something that isn't true. Uh -huh. It involves intentionally presenting false information yeah. or concealing the truth to manipulate others or achieve a specific outcome. Are y'all with me? Come on. Yes. Deception can come in many forms. There's lying, deceiving through omission that's telling a false truth, half truth, or creating a false impression. Overall, deception, my brothers and my sisters, undermines trust and it distorts reality, leading individuals to make decisions based off of a false narrative. Deception is something that we have all faced at one time or another. Deception can originate from those we trust, Monica, and from those we don't trust. One thing that binds us together on today is the fact that deception can lead to problems consequences and repercussions. Uh -huh. On the other hand,
when viewed in the context of one's integrity. Deception, deceptive practices can enhance the authenticity of a person who lives and acts honestly, righteously, and in love. Understand that one's integrity serves as a defense in the face of deception from others, often reflecting positivity on that individual. Isn't it interesting that even though we strive to do our best for the cause of Christ, we endure situations that cause us to distance ourselves from people because of their actions. And some of these actions, Sister Sue, has caused us to lose trust in the ones we love the most. Circumstances caused by deception can be uncomfortable. But God has a way of turning negatives into positives in our lives, relationships, and ministries. The Bible teaches us, and we know this, that all things work together for the good of those who, for those who love him, and those called according to his purpose. Through challenging experiences, God refines us, shapes us, and molds us into better individuals for his glory. And he uses our difficulties to promote growth for the greater good. See, I want us to understand on today that God is the only one who can use the anti-gospel spread by the chief priest, elders, and the soldiers to promote and spread the gospel at a more efficient level. Did y'all miss that? God is the only one, Sister Sue, that can use the anti-gospel to promote the gospel at a more efficient level. And this is done so that more people Understand the simple fact that Jesus is alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Jesus Christ, Mother Williams, is Lord. Amen. 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 As disciples of Jesus, the Christ, it is our call to be bearers of truth yes. and light in the world that often operates in deception and darkness. It is important for us to understand that God is the ultimate source of truth and righteousness. And in times of uncertainty, and in times of confusion caused by deception, we can find comfort in God's love and his wisdom. When we face deception, and we will face this deception, and we will face falsehoods, it is essential that the believer, Sister Rose Frank, remain steadfast in the faith. And we must remain true to our beliefs. And as we navigate the complexities of deception in our lives, 
Let us not get angry, but turn to God for strength and clarity so we know how it applies to our process that leads us to our purpose. By walking in his ways and upholding his truths, we can withstand temptations that are caused by deceit. And what happens is when we trust in God, we emerge from difficulties stronger than we went into them. And we become stronger, more faithful followers of Jesus the Christ. It is the blood that gives us strength from day to day. It will never, ever lose its power. See, we may be lied to and lied on, but from day to day, the blood never loses its power. Sometimes we are not talked to, but we are talked about. But from day to day, the blood never loses its power. We may have barriers up to protect our wounded hearts, but from day to day, the blood never loses its power. In our text for today, it focuses on the other side of the resurrection story. We understand, Brother Mark, that last week's message lets us know that the female followers of Jesus and the platoon of Roman soldiers stationed by the tomb encountered and witnessed the angel of the Lord. Matthew, the evangelist, as we know, in the former text collector, informs us that suddenly an angel of the Lord descended from the sky, causing a great earthquake. Are y'all with me on today? Yes. Then they witnessed the angel proceed to the tomb, roll away the stone from the entrance, and sit on top of it. He was just chilling. We understand from last week that the soldiers were frozen by the angels' actions. But as they were frozen, he assured the women that there was no need to fear. He let the women know, and thinking this baby, I'm sure that the soldiers were ear hustling. He said, Jesus, <laughs> whom they sought was not dead but he had risen from the dead just like he said and the women Elder Kill were then invited to witness the empty tomb for themselves and as we know the angel entrusted the women with the message to share which they courageously conveyed despite their initial fear. However, even though they had some fear, they were filled with joy and urgency as they set out to deliver the message. Nevertheless, Deacon Woods, we learned that the message preached by the women was not the only message 
the living following the resurrection. The text reveals that they were on their way. And while they were on their way, some of the soldiers made their way to the city. It wasn't all of them. But some of the soldiers. And not only did they make their way to the city, they went to the church. Upon their arrival, they relayed the news of the extraordinary events that happened at the tomb to the high priest. Am I y'all with me? And the elders. So they, relayed, they went to the church and they relayed the information to the pastor and the deacons. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really welcome that news. Consequently, Mother Wright, yes. the pastor called a call me. Uh -huh. <laughs> call me. <laughs> He said, we got to do something about these events. Uh -huh. And they came up with a plan to discredit the resurrection. But we understand that God cannot be discredited. See, the chief priests and the elders were aware of the potential consequences that the soldiers might face. So the priests, the chief priests, and the religious leaders offered them a bribe to create a false narrative about the resurrection. They instructed them to let the people know that Jesus' disciples came at night and stole the body while they were sleeping. My brothers and my sisters, this is what I call the anti-gospel. But do you know, and we've been involved with God long enough that he's powerful enough and God is smooth enough to use the anti-gospel to promote and authenticate the gospel. This fabrication devised by the high priest and the religious leaders per the word was still being circulated as Matthew concluded this gospel. But I find a few things interesting about God and I find a few things interesting about how he moved in the midst of the anti-gospel conundrum. The high priest, as we know, and the religious leaders as we know, cooked up the fabrication, Sister Regina, that the disciples had stole the body of Jesus. Let's observe what actually happened. First and foremost, before I dig in, we understand that the disciples couldn't have went to the tomb. Y'all with me? rolled away the stone breaking the Roman seal and removing Jesus' body without being seen. Not only would they have been seen but I think we can unanimously agree they would have been heard. 
Think of this guy, they would have awakened at least one of the soldiers. Yes, yes. And somebody, you know how folk are, somebody would have seen them either coming or going. But when we look at the disciples closer, we understand Deacon Woods that they were afraid. They were dejected and they probably had less belief in the resurrection after Jesus' death than they had before. However, we do understand that when they saw and witnessed and interacted with the risen, glorified Jesus, these same disciples who were afraid, dejected, and did not have the faith turned this world upside down. These same scared brothers had so much boldness, Sister Sue, they were willing to suffer. They were willing to endure persecution. Yes. Yes. And they, these same afraid, dejected, and faithless men were willing to lay down their life for the gospel. Yes. Understand that witnessing Jesus will change your perspective. Furthermore, we understand per Luke's account that the men did not even believe the women when they came. This disbelief was probably because of their prejudices and limited understanding. But this was the mindset of most Jews of that day. And this was the mindset that prevented them from believing that the Messiah even died. Think of the system. Since they couldn't wrap their minds around the Messiah dying, the resurrection was even more absurd to them. And due to the fact that they were afraid, dejected, and had less belief in the resurrection, they would not have come to the tomb anyway. Uh -huh. right. And understand, and I thought about this this morning. Brother George, stand up. Jelani, stand up. Todd, stand up. Ronnie, stand up. That's four. Deacon Wood, stand up. Brother Wood, stand up. That's one, two, three, four, five. Ray, stand up. Yeah, Ronnie Jerome. Leon, David, stand up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Including me. I put myself in the equation. The team. Now, I'm going to call Deacon Woods and say, Deacon Woods, I need you to get these brothers together so we can confront a platoon of Marines. Guess who ain't showing up? <laughs> Don't sit down. I proved my point. So you're telling me that 11 afraid brothers went to confront a platoon of, I'm gonna be honest, of the best killers of the day. No, brother. <laughs> Talk about it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if I call that type of me, ain't nobody showing up. I don't care how bold you think you are. 11 regular jokers ain't going to take on a platoon. We're not even going to risk taking on a platoon. Because we know in the end, we ain't going to win. However, Sister Sue, 
God uses the anti-gospel to prove the gospel to be true. We understand that he went to the high priests and the religious leaders. Let me make this clear. All they had to do was to produce a body or a revived, mutilated Jesus. Y'all with me? Because if Jesus had popped out of the tomb with no resurrected body, he, his body would have been covered in wounds and there is no victory in that. But we understand. He did go to the high priests and the religious leaders and they had the resources. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? To find the disciples. They had the resources to find a body. But guess what? They failed to produce any evidence. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and do math, but today is April the 7th, 2024. So, 2,000 years later, you still ain't produced nobody. <laughs> Those folks digging up over there, they ain't produced nobody. So, what they did to try to cover up the resurrection, my brothers and my sisters, proved that the resurrection was valid. And as we reflect on this account, let us reflect on the importance of bearing witness to the truth. God's people should be a people that are walking in truth. Amen. God's people are not a deceptive people. We are to live right. We are to love right. And we are to walk right. So it is our mandate to bear witness to the truth, even in the face of opposition and adversity. Just like the women. Both we shared the news about Jesus' resurrection. We also need to be courageous in these troubling and trying times to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. But not only must we proclaim the good news, my brothers and my sisters, we got to be living the good news. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. It demonstrates God's victory over sin and over death. Uh -huh. Now with all of that said, how can the concept of the anti-gospel be practically applied to everyday life in order to reinforce our faith? Number one, we must delve, develop ourselves to a point where we are able to discern the truth from deception. Number two, there must be a strengthening of our convictions so that we are able to stand in truth when we are being presented with fraudulent information. Number three, we must stand in truth 
And even in times of doubt, we understand that doubt, this is took close to me, is the pathway to our growth. The songwriter said, we say this. When we walk with the Lord, in the light of his word, where the glory he sheds on our way, while we do his good will, he abides with us still. And for all who will trust and obey, my brothers and my sisters, we are to trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. My brothers and my sisters, when we are presented with the fraudulent and we are presented with what is misleading, we must move in obedience and allow our trust in God to keep us anchored. When the evil one tries to manipulate our thinking, we must move in obedience and allow our trust in God to keep us anchored. When doubt and despair try to break the foundation of our faith, we must move in obedience and allow our trust in God to keep us anchored. When fear threatens to overwhelm us, when hatred seeks to divide us, when uncertainty clouds our vision, we must move in obedience and allow our trust in God to keep us anchored. When trials and tribulations test our endurance, when temptations try to lure us off the path of righteousness, when sorrow and grief weigh heavily on our hearts, we must move in obedience and allow our trust in God to keep us anchored. Today we rejoice, Sister Sue, because there's a fountain and it's filled with love. Draw from Emmanuel's veins as sinners plunge beneath the flood. Lose all their guilty stains. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus has given us the keys to eternal life. Don't fall for the okie doke. There will be deceptions in our lives. Don't fall for the okie doke. False accusers will try to bring us down. Don't fall for the okie doke. There will be joy snatchers. Don't fall for the okie doke. There will be peace stealers. Don't fall for the okie doke. Ray, I'm trying to tell him. Don't fall for the okie doke. There'll be trouble. There'll be heartache. And there will be pain. HNBC. Don't fall for the okie doke. There will be weakness. And there will be moments that we will be in despair. Deacon Herb, don't fall for the okie doke. There will be moments of loss. And there will be moments of destitution. Don't fall for the okie doke. We will get lonely sometimes. But don't give up. Don't go in the town. And don't fall. Keep Jesus, keep me near the cross. See, at the cross, there is a precious fountain, and it's free to all. 
is a healing stream. And it flows. Somebody know that it flows. From Calvary now. My brothers and my sisters, we thank God for the healing stream. Somebody sick on today. Thank God for the healing stream. Our burdens, they may be heavy, but we thank God for the healing stream. Joy may seem out of our reach, but we thank God for the healing stream. There will be times when we feel unhappy, but we pray God for the healing stream. There will be seasons of doubt. There will be moments of weakness. There will be temptations. And there will be trials. But we thank God on today for the healing stream. HMBC, we won't always agree. But we can agree to disagree. As a fellowship, we thank God for the healing stream. What can wash away out the sins? Nothing. But the blood, but the make HMBC home again. Nothing but the blood oppress us in the flow. That makes HMBC find snow. There's no other sound that makes HMBC know. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. And when we bask in the blood of Jesus, we ain't no fall but the Holy Ghost. So how can the concept of the anti-gospel be practically applied to everyday life to reinforce our faith? Number one, we must discern truth from deception. Number two, we must stand in truth when we are presented with fraudulent information. Yes, yes. And number three, oh. last but not least, we must learn to embrace doubt mm -hmm. as the pathway yes. to our growth. Yes. Yes. See the songwriter said, Amen. on a hill, mm -hmm. far away, yes. stood an old rugged cross. Yes. It was an emblem yes. of suffering. Yes. And shame. Yes. But see, I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So, guess what I'm gonna do? For the rest of my life, I'm gonna cherish the old fucking cross. Send the suit there, she's gonna claim to the old fucking cross. So, I got some folks that are gonna cherish it. I would cling to it to pursue. I'm gonna cherish it till my trophies. At last, I lay down. Here they the pot you like I'm gonna cling. I'm gonna cling. Grab it. Take hold of it. Say I'm gonna cling to the old record cross, and I'm gonna exchange it one day for a crown. So we must discern truth from deception. We must stand in truth when we are presented with fraudulent information. And we must learn to embrace doubt as the pathway to growth. Tell your neighbor, don't fall for the only dope. Turn to your other neighbor, give him a high five. They say, don't fall for the yoke of the door. The door to the church are open.